Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo begins her second term in office, facing one of the biggest mid-year budget deficits since she took office four years ago. As she considers a number of sources for new state revenue, she's also dialing down on new spending. Eyewitness News anchor Danielle North sat down with the governor as she looks back on her first term and plans for her inauguration day next week. Citing more than $950 million for Medicaid and more than $900 million for education aid as Rhode Island's biggest cost, the governor is hoping to push through online sports betting without a state referendum for increased revenue. She's also open to legalizing recreational marijuana. In a wide-ranging interview, she also addressed the biggest achievements and challenges of her first four years in office. This budget that I'm now trying to put together is, is one of the most difficult. And Governor Raimondo admits she's had her share of difficult moments during her first term, citing the failed UHIP system as her biggest challenge. I'm trying to get a settlement, but that was clearly the biggest mistake. The Democrat cites job growth in the state as one of her biggest achievements. She also touted low unemployment rates and the continued progress on repairing roads and bridges. But still not everybody's feeling it. So we want to raise the minimum wage, you know, make sure people can make a little bit more money so people aren't working full time in poverty. We really want to double down on our job training. That's going to be a huge focus of mine for the next four years. Currently, Raimondo says she's focused on keeping Pawtucket based Hasbro from moving its operations out of state. They're changing to face the changes in the world and they're thriving as a business. So if people say they should be in Hollywood, then how do you convince them if their image has changed to stay in Rhode Island? Well, we're not, we're not Hollywood. We are not, but so this is my point. So that's why I've been spending so much time with them to say, you can grow right here in Rhode Island and you should. Our talent is just as good. It's much less expensive here than in Los Angeles. You belong here, your traditions here. What can you recall was maybe your most challenging day in office what was your most, your day filled with the most achievement? The worst days are when I meet a mom who's, who's lost their son or daughter to addiction. And it reminds me we have so much work to do to fight that opioid crisis. The best days in office for me are when I meet people who have a good job and they didn't used to. By far, those are the best days for me. I also asked the governor about her relationship with two of the other top politicians at the State House. That's House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello and Senate President Dominic Ruggiero. She says while the three certainly have their disagreements, she feels Rhode Island still has one of the best functioning governments in the country and believes they'll be able to work together in their next term. I'm Danielle North, Eyewitness News. At five, we brought you the first end of our first part of our year end interview with Governor Gina Raimondo, covering everything from her biggest challenges and achievements to the upcoming state budget. New at six, we tackle health care, poor standardized test scores and her role on the Democratic Governors Association. Danielle North is here now with more of her exclusive interview. Governor Raimondo tells me that she's grappling with the changing landscape of health care in Rhode Island, including the proposed merger of Care New England with Partners Healthcare. So if we were to get comfortable with it, we would want assurances around jobs and care staying local and costs staying down. So at this point, you have your doubts about it? I, th yes, yeah, I think that's fair to say. Again, I think it could be a good thing. I think it could raise the quality of care, but it's, I'm not gonna rubber stamp it. We also discussed recent dismal RICAS test scores, and I asked the governor to specifically spell out how she plans to focus on strengthening the education system over the next four years. What is the plan in Rhode Island? What does it look like? Okay, so the plan is more teacher training and teacher support, um, high standards, don't water it down, um, stick to this test. This is a new test. The, just because the grades aren't great, we shouldn't throw it out the window and lower the standards and then really focus on curriculum. Make sure that what we're teaching is relevant. Raimondo's national profile is also on the rise. She was just elected chair of the Democratic Governors Association. It's great for Rhode Island. I mean, it raises Why, though? Because it raises the profile of Rhode Island. It allows me to get in front of a lot of companies and investors and tell them about Rhode Island, they should move to Rhode Island, they should hire Rhode Islanders, put jobs in Rhode Island. So look, any time that we can highlight our fantastic state to the rest of the country, I think is a good thing. 
And one of the most candid moments from our conversation came when I asked the governor to name something about the job that she didn't expect before being elected. You can watch that exchange right now on our website, WPRI.com. I'm Danielle North, Eyewitness News.